Drew is going to be listening to this episode sometime in the future. And be mortified. <laughs> yeah. But I remember feeling guilty. Please keep me safe through it, too. You felt guilty about that? Kind of. I felt like my purpose was to bring our child into the world. I feel like all women go into pregnancy and delivery with this plan, this like dreamlike plan of how they want it to go. All modesty goes out the window very, very fast. I felt like as a mom, my first like mom moment, I had already failed. The only way I can describe it is, you know what it feels like and sounds like to use kitchen shears and to cut through a chicken breast. It sounds like how a superhero is born, like the start how of a Marvel, Marvel movie. How Marvel movie starts. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Couple Things. With Sean, Sean and, and Andrew, Andrew. Which is us. <laughs> um, I feel like it's weird to say that, but... Whatever. Whatever. Um, this is our first episode. So, disclaimer. We've never done this before. That's right. Disclaimer, we have tried to shoot this 12 times before, so we should be somewhat versed in how this all goes. We by. almost killed each other in the first yeah. 12. That's right. Uh, but we didn't, so yeah. that's good news. You almost said, no, you did sleep in a different room. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that happened. Um, um, if you guys are new here, Couple Things is a show where we wanted to take our YouTube videos and make a little longer form video. So our YouTube videos are usually anywhere from 10 to 20 minute videos. And we said, you know what? Not every topic can be covered in that amount of time. So we wanted to say... Did let's... you just glitch for a second? Not amount of time? You get in my head I so do. bad. Anyways, um, Couple Things is about relationships. If you follow us on YouTube, you know that we do relation tips in a relationship series talking about everything that we've gone through with dating, engagement, marriage, now a baby. And like Andrew said, with 10 to 20 minutes, it's not enough time to get into the dirt of it. And something that I talk about a ton on our social media is how social media in today's society only paints a perfect picture of relationships. And relationships are not perfect, nor should they ever be. And so... We thought we'd tell you all the down and dirty stuff that happens. Um, so the show will usually be us talking about some relationship uh, event that has happened, or yes. we'll sit down and interview some of our couple friends, uh, mm -hmm. like Jana and Mike, Jordan mm -hmm. and JoJo. We're going to have a blast. And if you guys want to uh, request us to interview someone, you can do that on the, uh, the webpage or in the link uh, in the show notes down below. But if you haven't yet, before we get started... Give the show a rating and subscribe to it on whatever platform you're yes, listening to. Please. Uh, ideally, a, a five-star rating. Ideally. That would be think, great. If you think this is a five-star show, right? That would be great. Um, so today is a special episode, and we promised you guys that we were going to be telling the birth story from start to finish. And so it's going to be a little bit of a unique episode, but I'm excited. Are you? Yeah. I mean, nothing like talking about birthing a child. <laughs> Yours was a eventful, eventful yes. story too. Yes. So I'll give you a brief summary of what happened, and then we can go back and talk about like the highlights and Hit it. what we kind of went through. So, baby girl was her original due date was October 29th. Uh, we didn't know the gender. They ended up moving the due date up because they said based on the first ultrasound that she was actually farther along than we thought. So her new due date was October 23rd. I come around to 40 weeks, October 23rd. I'm not progressing at all, not dilating. Baby girl isn't moving. I mean, she's moving, but she's not like moving down. She's not trying to escape yet. Um, so we go into the doctor for our last visit. Doc is like, okay, let's start scheduling this thing because baby girl's not doing it on her own. So we schedule an induction for October 29th, the original due date. So she would be 41 weeks, and our doctor said she doesn't like to have anyone go over 41 weeks just because it's her personal preference and as, her, as a doctor and her professional opinion. We respected that. We scheduled the birth of our child for October 29th. We went in the night of the 28th to get induced, which is quite the experience because your body's not really doing it naturally, so the docs kind of force your body to do it. We went through every measure possible. Um, 
We went through pills inserted in places that I didn't know pills go. Um, what? <laughs> I had pills in, like taken the way that you would think pills should be taken. I had contraptions. Up the old poop chute. That's not how I feel like they should be taken. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I feel like they should be taken orally. Okay, right. But I had that pretty much. Right. Um, I had them up the... Right. You're giving, a, the you're giving a great synopsis. Can we break it yeah. down and kind of give the color commentary on it all? As soon as I like get... But yeah. We got to like go back and we'll, we'll do the highlights. So, sure. Sure. The biggest highlight so far up to this point is... Yes, I had pills stuck up the Susie. I had them taken <laughs> orderly. Yeah, I've never heard you say that. I heard someone say <laughs> that they taught their kid that a girl's parts are the Susie and the boy's parts are the pepper. So it's Susie and pepper. Okay, are, are you done with your synopsis? I mean, we're just getting started. I know. So let's take it back to the beginning and talk about why the due date Wait, debacle happened. I got to finish the synopsis. Finish and then I'll go back. Okay. So I had the pills. That wasn't working. I had contraptions put up the Susie. They didn't work. I got 15 hours into labor having contractions every other minute. Super, super painful. I was trying to be stubborn and do it naturally with no meds, which sucked. Uh, I then caved at um, hour 17 and got an epidural. We... Went on Pitocin. Pitocin didn't work. Started affecting baby girl's heart. Scheduled the C-section. And it was like 10 minutes later at hour 22. Baby girl was here. Now let's go back and tell them some of those highlights. Okay. So the whole due date confusion happened because apparently there's two different ways they come up with the due date, correct? Yes. One is conception. Date. And then the other is the date of your last period. Right. So, based off the date of the last period, Drew's due date was October 30th, correct? 29th. 29th. But yes, however, I was very irregular, and so that made it kind of confusing for the docs to like give us a due date. But... The other way, we thought we knew our conception date. Which is a, a fantastic story in and mm -hmm. of itself. Yeah. So just to give you background, Sean, Sean has bougie tastes in hotels when we travel. She kind of likes to me. like, she kind of likes to find the more boutique, like higher end, hey, let's have this as an experience instead of just a place to sleep. Um, but on this particular trip, we're traveling. Bougie. I just don't like bugs in my bed. Okay? <laughs> no, I. I'm with you on that. I have this had bed the... bugs before from a hotel and I was scarred. So judge you really? me. That's freaking yes. terrible. That's my nightmare. I just broke out a cold sweat thinking about that. It was awful. That's my nightmare. We would burn the whole house I actually down. went into the bathroom because I Googled how to know if you have bed bugs. And it said like go into the bathroom, turn off the lights and turn a light on. I'm out. Song I'm on out. me. That's terrifying. Burn it down. <laughs> burn it down. <laughs> the whole thing. So anyway, we were traveling during Super Bowl weekend and we had to go down to Miami and just we had an early flight and based off of the itinerary of the whole thing, we were like, you know, it's going to be easiest to just stay in the airport hotel at the Miami airport. It's hard to explain, but we were literally flying to Miami, staying there and flying back. We had like a an ad that we had to shoot for an airline. Right. Yeah. So we were literally staying in Miami for eight hours. Like, yeah. Six to eight hours. Yeah. So the airport hotel at Miami um, is not is not up to par. It I is not, not the Ritz Carlton. We're talking like we're talking like six foot ceilings. There was <laughs> there was not a window in the hotel room, which I don't know how that's legal. The door was. I think there like actually that. it no. kind of felt like the cardboard material. I think there actually was an, a window if you remember, but it was like one foot by one foot. It had bars on it, and, and it was frosted the, glass over. Hidden behind the AC unit yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But like the wallpaper was falling off, and there uh, were bugs. Like the the flooring was getting pulled up, and the the sheets were like that kind of plastic material. And you guys are thinking to yourselves, why would they be telling us this story? Well, well, all of those factors did not prevent us from having naked time, nonetheless. 
So. <laughs> and I literally uh, remember laughing and joking with Andrew after naked time was over. And I was like, I pray to God that we didn't just conceive our first child in this place. But sure enough. <laughs> We Nine did. months later, a lot <laughs> comes true. <laughs> so I guess that makes her a Super Bowl baby. It does. And just like she was kind of born in a motel or conceived in a motel, which is yeah, which is fantastic. Which is great. She's, Humble beginnings. Drew is going to be listening to this episode sometime in the and future. And be mortified. <laughs> yeah. Mortified. So, so that's when we thought Drew was conceived. But that didn't match up with the uh, period tracking. Yeah. So, so whatever, it's pregnancy, all a guesstimation. But and like half the doctors had, oh, you're due on October 23rd because of measurements or whatever, and half of them had October 29th. So the whole time we were like, we don't know when the actual. Well, date and is. then it got confusing if you remember because during the ultrasounds, the ultrasound text had a different date than the doctor. It was really so. Confusing. So then her measurements weren't lining up, and they're like, oh, she's, you know, she's only measuring at 26 weeks, but she should be at 27. So she's only in the. And percentile. we're like, what? She is a 27 weeks. Yeah, it was just confusing. Whatever. So needless to say, when you get into those final weeks of pregnancy, when you're every single hour is like a ticking time bomb of just like, can we get there? An extra week was brutal. Based off of your experience and what the doctor said, pregnancy is, was pretty fun for you until week 36. And then it just turns. I think... I truly believe every single pregnancy is different. Every mindset is different. Sure. Every body is different. Every baby is different. So I really don't think you could ever compare pregnancies. My pregnancy was really easy. I mean, I don't really have anything to complain no about. No morning sickness. You were I got like a little nauseous. Yeah. I had headaches. I really didn't get swollen too bad. I worked out to the whole thing. Um, but when I hit 30... I would say 37, 38, I was, I was done. <laughs> my joints hurt. My back hurt. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat because my stomach was squished into a raisin. My brain was hungry. My body wouldn't let me eat. Cuddling I couldn't becomes poop. a thing of the past. You couldn't? I didn't no. know that. Wow. This is news to because me. Because your bowels and intestines are smushed. <laughs> it's like, Yeah. yeah. It's like stepping on a hose and Needless turning on the say, water. There was no naked time. There was not. Right. No, that sounded awful. And there were then. there were a lot of other factors too, like you broke your toe. So we were like <laughs> we were pretty active through your whole pregnancy. We were doing daily walks, doing yeah, if, workouts. If you guys don't know that story, thirty nine weeks pregnant. Yeah, thirty nine weeks. Yeah. Um random weird incident. A cinder block fell on my big toe and snapped it. In half. Went to the ER. Get rolled in. Andrew wheeled me in on a wheelchair. And obviously when you go through an ER 39 weeks pregnant, the initial thought of anybody is, oh, she's in labor. I'm like, no, guys. But. <laughs> no, guys. <laughs> I'm here for something else. And everyone just was kind of laughing. They're like, I'm so sorry. You can't take pain, pain. You can't take pain medication. You have to be careful with the x-rays. You have, I mean, so many things. Made it really complicated. Every like everything they did, they had to put the baby monitor on too to make sure that yes. they weren't. Harming because the baby. I was kind of in shock and in pain, my blood pressure was spiking, which was not good for the baby. So I had to have, you know, OB come down and monitor me and the baby while orthopedic is trying to take care of my broken foot, and it was it was a mess. So when we walked in for our final appointment with the OBGYN at thirty nine weeks. We were pretty much like, let's let's do this. Let's get this thing out because we kept going in, and for like the four preceding weeks, she was doing her checks, and she was like, "Baby hasn't moved. You're not dilated. Baby hasn't moved." And I was doing still everything. Out. I was I was googling every possible. We were eating Mexican food like every night. We were having naked time, just trying to get baby to move. We had it one time. I distinctly remember. Yeah. You you found <laughs> it. Okay, good, good. Uh, um, he's still scarred by this. So. I was like, hey, let's let's have the the induction scheduled for October thirty first, which is important for two reasons. One, I don't know, Halloween baby, but more importantly, it's my grandpa's birthday, which I thought was really cool to have the opportunity that You know what? I wanna raise an individual. Papa was amazing. 
and he is an iconic man, but I want our daughter to be an independent woman. I get that. But if we have the choice to schedule when our child is going to be born, why not have it? Why not have it on an independent day where they can be their own person? Fair enough. So, so we chose oh, October well, 29th. Well, well we, I, I proposed this to the doctor. and She's like, no, nah, that's, that's Thursday and Thursday's my day off. And I was like, okay, well, <laughs> I'm a little offended <laughs> because there's part of you, you know, I, I guess I'm maybe as selfish as everybody else or self-centered, but I was like, you know, this is the birth of my child, so I should have total say on what's going to go on. In that's just my not perspective how, not how was if Doc wasn't that, doesn't want to do that day, Let's not schedule that day. You got some sass to you right now. Well, I love could it. you imagine scheduling? That's the last thing you want is for your doctor to be upset. Right. I wasn't like super, you know, I was, I, know, I, I know. had a little different role in the whole thing. So anyway, we scheduled it and mm-hmm. um, that gave us, it was like six days from when we had that last appointment to when the induction was going to yeah. happen. And do you remember the six days? Yeah. It, they were kind of a blur. I felt like we really didn't talk much. We really didn't talk a lot. We were just like silent. We yeah. tried to go on like date nights. So we still went out. We went to a Preds game. Yeah. Do you, I was 40 weeks pregnant. <laughs> yeah. Going to a Preds game. With a broken heart. We went tongue. to a concert. Yeah. Greatest concert ever. It was the most intimate concert with Chuck Wicks, um, Mitchell Tenpenny. Um, Shoot. Don't put me in the spot like this. There's a, a Gavin Rice. DeGraw was there. Lee Bryce, Gavin yeah, DeGraw. So, it's cool. It's so many people. It was amazing. It we was crushed. Amazing. We crushed through the Jack Ryan series mm-hmm. two, right? By and, the way, I had so many people saying like I was absolutely insane to be going out and doing all of that forty weeks pregnant, but it was the only thing that kept me sane. Literally, if I your, would have sat in the house and done nothing, yeah. I would have lost my mind. To your credit. You were really big on the fact that, like, hey, this is our last few days with life just being you and me, so let's maximize it and let's have a good time. I can't imagine that it was comfortable for you, but I appreciate the sacrifice because we had a great time. It wasn't, but it also was better than sitting at home. I mean, because your body is so achy and you really just can't get comfortable, doing anything and everything you can to just distract yourself from that helps. And... You're so consumed by the thought of like, my life is getting, like, is about to change forever. Yeah. I didn't want to just sit at home and think about that because I'm now thinking about that for the rest of my life. We bottled some East Fam honey, the Madison's Reserve. We did. Which was fun. And we did, the one day that we did kind of sit around and, and do was nothing the was the day of where we woke up, we did a workout. Sean's doing thrusters the day we go into the hospital to have the child. Do you remember that? Yeah. With a broken toe. You're a freak. Anyway, then after that, we kind of just I don't, on the couch. By the way, I'm not sure any doctor would recommend that. Right. I, actually, our OB was all for it, which that's why we get along so well. She's big in the, she's big in the CrossFit. Yeah. Um, but we sat around. Your parents came over right before we left for the hospital. We said we were, zero words to them. <laughs> yeah, it was like, yeah, that, they was, came over, that was crazy. They came over to pick up Nash, our dog. And it was like an, not even an hour before we left. We had packed up the car. And it was just that like daunting, real like life changing moment seeing them walk in because it kind of marked, I don't know, stamped the time. The end of an era. Oh my gosh. We prayed, we cried, and we were supposed to get to the hospital at like what nine nine thirty. So we we made it nine thirty p.m. Nine thirty p.m. So it was so we literally had the whole day of just like thinking about it. Like first of all, there's I was kind of scared Mm -hmm. because i had heard stories of friends whose Mm -hmm. wives had a tough time whether it was natural birth or c-section like complications and i'm like oh my gosh you kind of overlooked the whole like at least as a man i overlooked the whole process between sean being pregnant and me holding a child Mm -hmm. and there's a lot that can go wrong in that and so the day of i was just consumed by like okay we just gotta let's get through that like once i'm holding the baby i'm gonna be good and then it's also like this, yeah, like you were saying, mm-hmm. like, okay, you're prepping for the biggest event in your life. It's, I remember being kind of a confusing time for me. I mean, leading up to the pregnant or leading up to the delivery and during the delivery, because I'm a believer. So I pray, we pray a lot. 
And I remember being so confused about my prayers because I didn't want to be selfish at all, which I think is something moms probably deal with a lot is trying to balance that. But I remember going into it praying for nothing but like a safe delivery for our baby. No matter what you had to go through? Is that what you mean? No matter what. I, I didn't care what I had to go through. Like, I truly didn't. I thought it was selfish of me to pray for a painless, you know, quick delivery. I don't care. I don't care what I have to go through to deliver our child. But I remember feeling guilty, kind of like throwing it at the end, throwing it into the end of a prayer, saying like, please keep me safe through it too. You felt guilty about that? Kind of. Because. Hmm, that makes me sad. Well, and I don't mean it to be like a depressing thing, but it was it was just this weird feeling of, I felt like my purpose was to bring our child into the world. So, I don't know. I didn't feel like I could pray for anything more than that. I wanted them to be safe. I just got the chills. Okay. <laughs> but That's anyways... Sad. Did you get the pregame jitters? Oh, absolutely. You, like, you know this. I was shaking through the whole thing. I was so nervous. Yeah. I was nervous and excited and just filled with adrenaline and fear. And your body just kind of goes into shock, especially when I was laboring for 14 hours. The pain got really bad, especially with all the contraptions I had in my body. At one point, we when I was still natural, so I didn't have any medication... We did what they call a Foley bulb. Mm-hmm. And so they basically insert this like balloon into your cervix and pump it up to try to like manually open your cervix. And that mixed with the contractions that I was having every other minute that were already very, very intense was a lot. And I remember I was in a cold sweat. I couldn't stop shaking. I could not talk through my contractions even remotely. It was just a lot. From what I've heard, people who get the Foley bulb, Foley bulb, is that how you say it? I think. It's more painful than actually giving birth naturally. Well, I mean, I didn't give birth naturally, so I I'm wouldn't just, know. No, I'm just saying like that. <laughs> you handled that like a champ, so I'm sure if you did birth through naturally, yeah. it would have been a I had birth. most moms tell me that labor is worse than birth. So Let's, like by the time you're there, you're there. Let's walk them through the progression. So we get to the hospital at like 9.30 after we made an obligatory stop at Wendy's, which is it's very important to my family. Because I couldn't eat after we, 2 p.m. that day, and he was stuffing his face with fast food. <laughs> we, and... had, we used to have family reunions at Wendy's, so it's a special place. Yes. Anyway, yeah. we get to the hospital, and um, they get us onboarded, like registered and everything, and then pretty much had to strip you down, get you in the gown, mm-hmm. with your old booty hanging out, mm-hmm. looking cute. Thanks. You were exci- you were so excited at, at this point, right? I was so, uh, obviously. <laughs> like, it had been 10 months. Pregnancy, by the way, is 10 months, not nine, like they teach you. Yeah, nobody really life. tells you that. It's like it's 40 weeks. 10 is, months. It's 10 months. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whoever missed that calculation from day one. Really blew it. It is 10 months. Anyways. It's 10 months of anticipation of your child and of that day. And it's not like my water just broke and we went rushing to the ER. Like it it was, we planned, we packed, we prepped, we drove there. And I was so excited. Yeah. It was like I was walking into the Olympics again. So after, I mean, it was pretty much a half hour, I feel like, from when we parked to when they were, they had you hooked up to everything. Yeah. And you had no contractions leading up to the hospital, correct? Correct, except if you remember when they put the monitor on me, I was contracting. So is, is that considered Braxton Hicks? I don't know. You don't know? Okay. You're asking the wrong person. <laughs> okay, so the, the little monitor I wasn't was feeling picking anything. up. Right. So. Um, so they started giving you uh, Cytotec, correct? Mm-hmm. Which is what? It's something I think that helps soften your cervix. To help you dilate, essentially. Dilate and like encourage labor. Okay. They give you a dose of that every four hours. Is I that think, correct? It's kind of a blur, but that's... It was... The, you were being kept up because the doctors would visit you. The nurses would visit you like every half hour. Mm-hmm. We were sitting there jamming to 10,000 Hours by Dan and Shay. On we, repeat Literally on repeat. Hours. The freaking greatest song ever. Yeah. But they kept checking me with Cytotec. We went through like four doses of it and it 
it was working, but really, really slowly. After the really fourth, really slowly. After the fourth dose, that's when Doc said, "Let's try the Foley bulb," but warned me it does hurt. Which was like twelve hours into us being mm-hmm. in the hospital. We did the Foley bulb. I was still walking around, um, and we also started pitocin then, which started intensifying the contractions immensely. We went through yeah. two rounds of Pitocin and things were progressing, but very, very, very slowly. I was dilating, but baby girl wasn't dropping at all. So she wasn't getting any closer to coming out. And you were dilating slowly too. Yeah, but I was contracting a lot. So, so can you just describe as best you can what a contraction <laughs> feels like? I tried to explain it to Andrew. It's So for a woman... It's like the worst period pain or period cramps you ever had in your entire life, times a million. Um, times one million. But I've also heard again, every delivery is different, every labor is different. For me, it was intense because of the Foley bulb, because I didn't labor naturally, because of the pitocin and everything. So things were very intense for me. Um, but I tried to explain it to Andrew. I'm like, it's if you remember the sickest you've ever been, like with diarrhea. <laughs> okay okay that sounds terrible it's but you know how your like start. stomach turns into knots and it's yeah. like cold sweat if you don't get to a bathroom something bad is gonna happen yeah i want you to pause that moment <laughs> <laughs> you can't go to the bathroom <laughs> that's terrible you have to hold it and then times that by maybe a hundred do you think it's do you think it's Worse than the contraction simulator? Absolutely. Or we're going to have to get you. In no, we're not. Because I went through I, it. I imagine contractions, it's like it's like your muscle just flexing really no. hard. But it's not like that. I, it's like you're going to pull your pants. I thought it was going to be like that. I mean, you really can't prepare for it. It's not like that. It's not like it's not like an electrical shock to your muscles. It's, it's like your intestines and your insides tying into a knot. That sounds miserable. Yeah, so we go through that. Yeah. No, 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 not we, you. I, thank you. Um, I get 14, 17 hours in on a few rounds of Pitocin. They kept upping the dosage. Nothing was, we weren't progressing fast enough. And I was hurting. So I was like, epidural time. I'm, I'm checking out. Which was really hard for me. Because I feel like all women go into pregnancy and delivery with this plan, this like dreamlike plan of how they want it to go, which is a joke because you will, you always learn that nothing goes to plan. (laughs) Um, But I've explained it to you and we've had conversations that I think it's so important and I feel like women hang on to that plan so tightly because it's your first moment where you truly feel like a mom. It's like your first decision. How do I want to bring my child into the world? And for me, I had my plan. I wanted to do it naturally for whatever reason. I wanted to birth her naturally. I didn't want a C-section. Like in an ideal world, that's what I wanted. And when that had to change, I felt like as a mom, my first like mom moment, I had already failed, which brought on guilt i soon i very quickly like forgot about it because the epidural felt so good um but it was it was a rough moment i felt guilty i felt weak if i could pause and give you kudos for a second i feel like so many people i've i've said this multiple times that depending on who you ask everything is okay and nothing is okay when it comes to pregnancy and raising a child and like whether it was us going into to get induced at 40 weeks as opposed to waiting as long as we could or us getting induced period, mm-hmm. or you getting an epidural, or us getting a C-section. There's literally a hundred different decisions mm-hmm. that need to be made that people are super passionate about. And while you did have a plan, you were super um, humble about it and trusted the doctors. Mm-hmm. You trusted me and, and, and ha- us having conversations about, hey, they say this could affect the baby. Is it worth it? Yada, yada. And so I just feel like you navigated it really well and didn't you didn't beat yourself up about um, about any of the decisions that so many people put some maybe unwarranted importance on, you know? Yeah, so. I would I would also say, though, 
I think that's just something that we needed and we kind of ran with. I've said this before. I think every parent parents differently. And every parent should respect other parents' way of parenting. It's a lot right. of parent. The word parent. Um, but for us, we aren't doctors. We don't know this. We haven't done it before. And so for us, it was... We found an OB that we trusted and we liked and that held our hand through it and walked us through it. And so we trusted her opinions and we just kind of chose, we chose to. She respected our opinions. She respected if we had questions, if we wanted to push back. But at the end of the day, we kind of had chosen our path of what comforted us in bringing our child into the world. And I feel like every single mom out there and dad does that in their own way and you just respect it. There's just, there's so many like context, contextual things that affect the decision making process, Mm -hmm. like religion or everything. Yeah. Like the community you're in that say, Hey, you can't do this when it comes, don't let your baby get this medicine once they're born. And it's like, don't look, make informed decisions, but it's probably going to be okay. Like (laughs) all the decisions that are presented to you by these different people, it's probably like, well, there's not a like an absolute wrong one, you know? You have to be careful in saying that because that's under an umbrella of very, very controversial topics where people truly believe in right and wrong. We do too. That's what I'm saying. No, I, I, I know. I understand what you're saying. But... I'm saying... I'm saying I respect all the decisions. I dislike how some people are made to feel like they failed like you, like you were. Yeah. I don't think that's right. I agree. I... So, so make really informed decisions, be thoughtful about it, but don't beat yourself up about it. I agree. I so agree. that's that's all I have to say. So moving through the progression. So the Pitocin was an interesting balance because they couldn't give you too much because it affects the baby. Mm-hmm. Um, and so But they it, wanted to give enough to start progressing labor. And again, it was moving slowly, so they gave you the fully blown. They they uh, early afternoon on the 29th, they broke your water. They broke my water, which was a crazy feeling. She did it so casually, the doctor. She was like, all right, we're just going to pop. Oh, there goes your water. And then do you remember the freaking no, mucus plug? No, I can't see. You didn't see the mucus plug? You're lucky. It was gross. Well, I was like, welcome. what just happened? Welcome to the life of a girl. <laughs> what just happened? Welcome to the life of a girl. I'm sorry uh, you're scarred by that moment. Um, so, yes, they break my water. They keep upping Pitocin, but they keep having to bring it back down because her heart rate was being affected um how many hours are we in now like 20 i've gotten the epidural i have a catheter you had so many things i had so many tubes like literally you had two ivs you had your freaking epidural you had the fully blown fully bulb. bulb. i don't know why i can't say that fully bulb and then you had a doctor checking you yeah up the old Susie, as you yeah. would say every 30 minutes which the all, lack of shame and privacy. I was just saying, like, all modesty goes out the window very, very fast. It's like spread them wide, you were strip it down. <laughs> literally laying on the table with your with your legs and crisscross applesauce. But, yeah, just anyway. opened the world. I am super fortunate. I feel like we were fortunate in having awesome doctors and an we awesome did. hospital. Life like life changing doctors. They were. I, I'm not the most modest person, but. Because of the world we live in, I'm I'm very cautious. Okay. Shy. Okay. What What would you say? I didn't know what you meant by saying modest, but you're saying like with your yeah body. I don't I don't love to just show everything to the world. I don't walk around naked Thank in front of people. Yeah. yeah. And especially because of the world we live in, where we have a name. I the idea of someone saying like oh I saw Sean naked or whatever I don't know it just like freaks me out a little bit so to have such incredible people that made us feel so comfortable and just immediately was awesome yeah Sean's going through all this meanwhile I am the most emotionally and maybe physically fatigued I've ever been because I was in like a full on flex it's stressful she's sitting there shaking she's nervous she's like going through the contractions I'm so glad you got an epidural just because for you, it seemed to be a game changer yeah. of like, it, it was a misery and then you had the epidural and it was way better. And so it's like, well, Hey, you got to experience contractions. Awesome. Let's move on. Like I 
told you the hardest part for me and the reason why I ended up tapping out and saying I need the epidural is going through all of that labor with zero progression was yeah. so defeating. Right. Because it wasn't like I was making progress. Yes, I was dilating, but since she wasn't dropping at all, we were still at the start line, 17 hours in. And yeah. I just like, it's hard to find motivation. Yeah. But I get that. So at 7 p.m., I'm downstairs eating a burger with my parents. And I get a FaceTime call from Sean. Yes. The doctor had come in. She had checked me again. She was like, okay, it's been 20 hours, 22 hours. 22 hours. You have not progressed at all. You're dilated five centimeters in 22 hours on so much Cytotec and Pitocin that we can't up it anymore. She said the baby has not moved, like hasn't yeah. dropped even a centimeter. She said she could feel her head, but her biggest fear was that since the baby hadn't dropped, that the baby wasn't fitting. Yeah. She could kind of feel the baby, but she, she said she thought the baby was stuck in my pelvis and was unable to drop. And she's like, I think our safest option right now is to talk about a C-section. And honestly, I didn't want a C-section. But at that time, I was just like, okay, let's do it. Let's do what we need to do for a baby. And I, I FaceTimed Andrew because I didn't think I should text you or call you. And I was like, so doctor is talking about a C-section. You're like, I'm on my way. <laughs> so I sprinted up there. Uh, just to give you some stats, I thought this was interesting. Um, Sean's, like the her size on percentiles of females, your second percentile. In of, height. In, in yeah. height. Drew's head was 98th percentile. Yeah, she's so, a big girl. So to me, the math was never going to add up. And the doctor <laughs> said this baby was not going to come out naturally. Yeah. Um, and it, I, guess, I guess your athletic background with like you just – being so active also made your muscles tighter and so it more difficult to have a natural delivery hmm. is did you hear that or not no i was kind of in a coma <laughs> anyway so we get the call run upstairs and everything happened rather quickly say, by the time andrew got up to the room you had your hair net on we had our we had drew in 10 minutes yeah it was insane and i remember doc even saying like as soon as andrew gets up here i'll talk We'll go through this again. We'll talk about our options. If this is what we want to do. And we did. And we talked for five minutes. And she's like, okay, let's do this. And she stood there. And I was like, why aren't you leaving? Like, I literally had the thought. I was like, why Why are you just hanging out? And she's just standing there. If you remember, she's in her scrubs. She's got her arms crossed. And more people start coming into the room. And I'm like, so do we schedule this? And she's like, no, we're let's do it. And I was like, what do you mean? Let's do it. <laughs> so casual. I was like, we're going right now? Again, this is so funny. Like, all these professionals do this multiple times a day. But for you, when you're in the moment about to have your child, you're like, why are you not stressed yeah. out? This is crazy. But, anyway, but I again, guess, it's, I guess it's so good. comforting how chill they are. Yeah, it's good. And I know they're not, like, always chill in every situation. There's a lot of emergencies. But still, their bedside manner is incredible. And it yeah. was so comforting because it's such this crazy process so they get me like hooked up they upped my epidural to like numb everything which was insane i couldn't even like lift my leg which was such a weird feeling they roll me back to the or as soon as we get to the operating room doors i go in andrew has to stay back just for a few minutes while they get me prepped they strip me down they scrub me down um they put me on the table. They put up the curtain. Doc is talking to me. The tech is talking to me. I remember the assistant. Um, I don't remember what his name was. I probably shouldn't say it anyways. Jeez. Um, the assistant. I remember him as he was like helping prep me. He's like, don't worry, girl. You're still going to be able to wear a bikini. And I'm like, thanks. Yeah. And I'm shaking. And the anesthesiologist, is she's holding my hand. And the head anesthesiologist is behind my head. And he's talking me through it. And it was just so, for such a scary moment, it was so comforting to have so many people just walking me through that moment. You didn't mention me in the whole comforting. This is just, well, no, this is <laughs> oh, just in the, like, the so, prep. So they let you come in. Yeah, and I walk in and Sean's like visibly shaking She's crying, and that was a special moment for me just to sit there and hold your hand and to watch you go through all this suffering, the contractions, 
all these decisions. It's like so, there's so much that's taxing you during that process. Mm -hmm. And to see you do it so willingly and strongly and bravely was like, just made me proud as your husband, which was cool. And then for us to share that moment of like, we're we're about to have this child. We're about to meet this child any second, and we're sitting there both crying, both like you were shaking more than I was. Mm-hmm. But it was like this wild emotional ride. I want you to describe, yeah, the feeling of when they actually cut you open. First, it is such a crazy moment. I remember when you walked in. I don't know. It's I've had knee surgeries, four of them. I've been on the operating table many times, but that one. It's such this unique feeling as a woman getting ready to give birth because it is so sacrificial. I mean, you're not there for you. Mm. You're not there for any benefit to you. You're there to give life to someone else. And it was such this vulnerable feeling of, again, that's where like the prayers came in. I was just like, please protect our baby Mm. and please let me be around. (laughs) Yeah. Not to feel like depressing. Um, okay, so in the middle of the surgery, so you can't feel pain, but you can feel everything going on with the epidural. So I didn't have a spinal block. I just had the epidural. You mean like pressure and, and people like kind of touching you? Yeah, so you can feel them touching you in pressure, but you can't feel like pain. Um, so at one point, I'm like, I can feel what they're doing and I can I know about surgeries enough. Um, to know like what it is that they were doing. I've researched C-sections. I, I've done all of that um, research to know. And I was kind of walking through the process as they're doing it. I can't see, but I can feel. And at one point, you know, the only way I can describe it is, you know what it feels like and sounds like to use kitchen shears and to cut through a chicken breast. It's literally what it sounded like and oh. what it felt like. And at that moment, I was like, okay, they're cutting through my abs, uh, my uterus, uh, one of the one of them. I think they actually pull your abs aside. So I think they're cutting through the uterus. But I was like, this is interesting. Oh, that's terrible. And then I ended up telling Doc afterwards during our my like checkup afterwards. But I was like, I don't know if you know this, Doc, but in the operating room, there is an electronic clock that is in sight when you're on the table. And if I looked at the clock, it was like a mirror and I could see everything they were doing on the operating table. And I was like, I don't know if you know that, but you might want to move it. Did you ever feel like you were going to pass out if you looked at it or anything? No. No. Because it didn't even feel like my body. Since I couldn't feel the pain, it was kind of like... Well, anyways, they cut me open. They pulled her out. What did that feel like? What? What did that feel like? Just a lot of pressure released. Wild. They pushed so hard on your abdomen. I I felt that. Like I felt like they pushed all the way through the table. And then all of a sudden it was like nothing was there. Our our friends filmed uh, their child getting pulled out from a C-section. And (laughs) to see the doctor cut, make the cut... And the head literally violently like pop out pops out. I, I didn't witness any of that because I was just locked yeah. in on you. But it, it's what a wild thing, mm-hmm. you know. It was nerve wracking. So again, since I couldn't see anything, I was listening to the doctor. I was listening to her voice. I was listening to the tech, trying to like read the room pretty much. And when I felt them pull her out. They didn't say anything about the umbilical cord being wrapped around her neck, but I ended up seeing that in a foot in footage later. But all I could hear was, Doc, she was happy. The doctor was happy. She was laughing that little girl's or little baby's feet were up by her head. And she's like, yeah, she would never have come out. And she's like, she's such a big girl and all this. But through this, like, 30 seconds that she's excited, the doctor... The baby's not crying. So I'm looking. I'm looking over the curtain, and I see the doctor holding Drew face ta- down. Drew's purple, not making a sound, not moving, and like worst case scenario comes yeah. through my mind. Yeah. Because I don't know. They don't really prep you for that moment. No, they don't. And so it took thirty seconds, and then Drew cried, and it's like, oh, I can literally hear it now. Yeah. And then I doctor- started. 
hyperventilating oh crying. I it was. I was trying to think about what it was I was feeling. I was thinking about this today. I don't know how to describe that moment because it's relief. It's happiness. It's fear. Like, I'm scared because baby's here and now life has changed. Mm-hmm. I'm happy because baby's here and she's crying and everything's good. It's like you cross the finish line of the longest marathon of your life because you've been pregnant for so long and gone through everything and it's like, ugh. It is just... And then you realize it's just the start of the night. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I truly remember not being able to breathe. I was crying so hard. I was crying and laughing simultaneously, which I, I'd never experienced that before. Um, but that's when it happened. 7.49 p.m., October 29th. Baby Drew came out eight and a half pounds. Uh, eight measured, pounds, eight ounces, measured, 20 and a half inches. That's right. Um, I want to talk about the cord blood registry. So yeah. one thing we did was a cord blood reg- registry where they can take the baby's umbilical cord and some of the blood. They send it off to be uh, stored for when Drew or the child grows up. Um, they can use the stem cells to treat up to like 80 different um, ailments. Il- ailments. And so as part of that, they do a lot of these tests. Mm-hmm. And even when, when Doc pulled baby out, she said... "Well." To give background, sure. We had a two vessel cord baby, right? Which was terrifying when we got, quote unquote, diagnosed, because you do this ultrasound, you come back to the doctor's office. The doctor's like, "Well, things look okay, but there's only two vessels in the cord instead of three. It can um, be risky for the baby. She might not get enough oxygen, nutrients." They tell you all the things that could go wrong now with this instead of like. Hey, here are like the optimistic numbers. They're like, hey, this could be an indicator for Down syndrome, and this could be, um, they they could have kidney problems, and mm-hmm. like this list of things. So when she was here, and like we had made it to that finish line, it was like, okay, we we overcame this hurdle of the two vessel cord. So when the doc pulled her out, typically a two vessel cord would be frail and kind of wimpy um, compared to like a three vessel cord, but the doctor would was describing it to us and she was like that that two vessel cord had more blood in it than a three vessel cord like most other three vessel cords that i've seen and it looked very robust and not the frail that we had kind of expected so they Um, packaged it up pretty much and sent it off to the lab right to be stored and we get a call from uh, The the lab and they say hey typically when we do these samples we're looking for like on a on the good end of things one million stem cell samples for drews we've never seen anything like this she had 1.5 billion stem cells and so i'm not 100 percent sure if it's stem cells so let's just put that disclaimer in there i don't know if it's stem cells it's some sort of cell keep going sample cells just protecting us thank you there you go so again we don't really know what that means but it's kind of like what a, one of our friends said it's like it sounds like how a superhero is born like the start how of a marvel, marvel movie, movie starts um so but anyway. they were they ended up testing her sample multiple times because they kept thinking they were making a mistake but they said yeah we've never seen it before she had 1.5 billion healthy cells that we could store for her instead of a million which is what we look for and it was just like this proud moment because it was kind of a scary pregnancy because we didn't know how a two vessel cord was going to turn out for her and it was inspiring to me yeah for her to she's a fighter yeah to, to have this hurdle and she just crushed it um was so inspiring so i also want to say i think it was cool i've described this to you before the moment that they handed drew over to us in the operating room and i got to do the skin on skin and actually see her and hold her It's this instant change in life, and it's not something you can really describe. I'll try, but people always tell you that babies are life-changing, and babies, you know, put everything into perspective, and it's like, okay, well, how does that happen just over time? But literally, in an instant, the second I held her, I just kind of knew nothing in the world would ever matter again. I mean, I don't care about work. I don't care about... My like, I don't want to say myself, but everything selfish goes away, and it's like my my life is now for you, and it was the most peaceful moment ever. Just having the three of us there, I feel like 
there's like nine months of anticipation and anxiety and and just a lot of questions like are we gonna have a healthy baby you know we didn't know the gender so that was exciting and so once we held drew in our arms and like everything was great the three days Mm -hmm. after was was so heavenly just because there was nothing else as you're saying going through my mind it was just us cuddling with drew talking about drew and it was awesome but what a time i was to say i feel like there's so much more we could talk about the time the four days you're at the hospital and just me being overwhelmed and the emotional side and the hormonal side and the not knowing how to change a freaking diaper i had never changed a diaper in my life and just yeah. this overwhelming fear of being a parent but it was it is and truly is or it was and truly is the greatest thing we've ever done together in our life it's pretty cool it's pretty special and i do want to say something that we're working on it hasn't been easy so far but something that we promised each other andrew and i at the hospital i said this to you before we even had her i said you will forever be my number one and I mean that. But Drew will always be our number one. And I think the reason why I said that to you is I think the only way to raise our child in the in a healthy way is for us to be each other's priority. The better our relationship is, the better parents we can be. And it has not been easy <laughs> the past six weeks. We've learned a lot. But so we can maybe do another episode. This Again, this is kind of a unique episode. Uh, about the birthing story start to finish if you guys want to hear about all the things all the wonderful things we've learned mm. since we've had drew all, all the wonderful the, fights all the breakdowns we've had uh we can maybe make that happen but thank you guys for the patience on this episode um we launched that trailer and people went crazy over it yes. and so we were advised not to launch another episode uh, until the new year for a bunch of different reasons but we were like we promised our audience yeah. this so uh Sorry, it came late. And we were but. also trying to um, get back on two feet with a newborn. Yeah, so. we, yeah, we, we really have no idea what we're doing. But <laughs> no. um, anyway, hope you guys like this show. Yes. I, I had fun doing this with Me you. Me too. This was better than the other 12 times we tried to do yeah, okay. This is better. This has yeah. been the best one so far. Um, if you guys haven't, subscribe to the show on whatever platform you're listening to, whether it's YouTube, Spotify, Please give iTunes. us a rating. That's right. And a review. I don't know how that works. You don't? No. Well, maybe you should rate the show yourself. Okay, I'll try. Do that. Um, But thank you so much for listening. Hope you guys like this longer form conversation. I think we definitely disclosed some details we hadn't talked about before. Um, But that's all we had for you. We'll see you next time, guys. Peace, fam. Out.